Hi there, welcome to this video about galaxy formation and black holes. I'm Dr. Freik Wallinder. Nobody has seen the birth of a galaxy. Current telescopes are not powerful enough. But that's about to change. The overall scenario looks like this. The universe began in the Big Bang 13.7 billion years ago. Radiation dominated early on since atoms would have been destroyed by high energy photons. This is the radiation era, which ended about 300,000 years after the Big Bang. The cosmic background radiation was then set free and matter had a chance to assemble into structures. The dark matter halos merged and their gravity attracted the surrounding gas, thereby giving birth to the first stars and proto-galaxies in the universe. But exactly how this happened is still a mystery. Let's see what observations tell us about the start of galaxy formation. This gravitational lens provided information about the stars in the background galaxy, dating their birth to only 200 million years after the Big Bang. The perhaps best evidence of galaxy evolution comes from the Hubble Deep Field as shown here. Almost every object in this picture is a galaxy, at different stages of their evolution. Elliptical galaxies were apparently born early on, whereas the spiral galaxies needed more time to develop. The Hubble replacement, the James Webb Telescope, is shown on the right. It will be launched within a few years and will provide much better information about what happened when galaxies were born. The standard scenario is that small proto-galaxies with, say, a billion stars each collided and built up the modern galaxies we have today. That process is still going on. Our galaxy is currently eating up two smaller galaxies called the Magellanic Clouds, visible from the southern hemisphere. Let's now proceed with the black hole. All real black holes are rotating with the rotation axis. They are more complicated compared to the standard Schwarzschild black hole. These so-called Kerr black holes have two horizons and crossing the inner one is not wise since you cannot come back to our universe. You could survive crossing the outer one if you choose the right orbit. The region between the horizons is called the ergosphere. Nothing inside that region can stand still. Everything must participate in the black hole rotation. That purely relativistic effect has recently been confirmed by the Gravity Pro B team after decades of research. The singularity becomes a ring oriented perpendicular to the rotation axis and passing through that ring will give you a really weird view of the surrounding universe. Black holes were a mathematical curiosity for a long time, with little evidence to support their existence. But that changed in the 1970s and 80s through X-ray observations. A classic object is Cygnus X1, as shown here. One star has collapsed into a black hole, sucking matter from the other star. Matter is heated in the accretion disk close to the black hole, which leads to the observed X-rays. Other evidence comes from the gamma ray bursts, which signal the death of a massive star, which thereby collapses into a black hole in just a few seconds. A couple of jets are shot out, and if one of them points in our direction, we see a gamma ray burst. The power corresponds to the total output of our sun during its whole 10 billion year lifetime, released in just a few seconds. Other evidence of black holes come from the galactic center, where stars move around quickly due to the gravity of the black hole. It is inactive at the moment due to lack of fuel. With more fuel, the black hole becomes active, such as Centaurus A, shown here. The trigger in this case is a galactic collision which transfers fuel to the supermassive black hole. Notice the jets coming out from the center, that's typical of an active galaxy. 
The power source is shown in this fantasy image. The gas settles in an accretion disk around the supermassive black hole. The disk rotates faster near the, ho near the hole compared to further out, which leads to frictional heat which is radiated away from the disk. This simple but effective mechanism can explain all active galaxies including the quasars, the most luminous ones in the universe. We can now identify two feedback sources by which the surrounding galaxy is affected by the central black hole. The first is this in the intense radiation coming out which can push gas through radiation pressure. The second is kinetic energy from the jets moving out at near light speed causing shocks and compression of the gas moving outward. It seems that we must take the black hole into account when we discuss galaxy formation and evolution. This figure shows the relation between the mass of the black hole and the mass of the bulge. The latter is the central condensation of stars. No bulge means no central black hole, whereas a typical spiral galaxy has a medium-sized black hole with a mass of about 1 million solar masses. Elliptical galaxies, which are 100% bulge-like, contain the most massive black holes in the universe, with a mass of billions of solar masses. They are the ones responsible for the quasars. How to explain this connection between two separate entities is unknown at present. To understand galaxy formation will therefore require new observations as well as better physical understanding. The latter will probably come from supercomputer simulation such as the one shown here, taking all relevant effects into account. This is not an easy task by the way. Let me conclude with our new membership site called Astronomy Gold, which will contain a global community of people having fun with astronomy. Members will also have exclusive access to videos such as this one. You get more information by going to the site astronomygold.com. Thank you very much for checking out this video. I hope I will talk to you soon. Goodbye.